All right, I am back once again, and we are looking at the Genie model SP129. This was made, uh, I think, about the same time as the track drives. It is clutch. Still uses chain dogs. Uh, I don't think there's any visible. I got the door open. Uh, there should be one somewhere back here. There you go. There's one of them. That is one of the replacements. The other one has the, the little um, thing that clips onto the chain. I do have, oh yeah, that is the original light lens. And it doesn't show up too well, but it is quite yellowed. Maybe you can see the top, see how much more white it is. I do have the original remotes. They are 1890s. Oh yeah, I had to replace the logic board, so I know the codes in these ain't set. This one that I opened? Yeah. Oh wait. I'll get to those boards in a minute. This has the uh, the punch out dip switches. I didn't. This is the first time I've ever seen the remotes with the punch out ones. I thought they were just regular switches like all the rest of the remotes. There's an old battery for you. I doubt that's any good by how much rust is on it. There's there's the other one. I didn't open it to check its battery, but I imagine it's the same. I have its original board over here in this mess of boards. It is punch out. Uh, this one doesn't work right. It clicks, but it, it won't run the door, so I gotta figure out what to do with that. I put the remote. No. Like I said I'll get to all the boards and everything else in a minute. I'm gonna run this down. That's that other chain dog. That's what they're supposed to be. And there goes that one. And off. Yeah, I figured I'd do something a little different. Start with the door open today. And trip all over the uh, snowblower that I'm working on. But yeah, I cleaned all this up, so most of its parts are in a box now. So I at least have room to walk around in here. And we'll go back up. Kind of see how this works. There's a um, this little plastic thing right here. It just pushes that over and it makes contact. It it works mostly. It's mostly similar to the GS200. It's just a much more simplified machine. There, these boards and those boards and this box is a huge lot that I got on eBay of supposedly non-working stuff. This is the stuff that I haven't tested yet. I, mean, I got like. These are analog linear receivers. I think they're universals because there's there was a power cord coming out of it, but someone cut them. I got four of those. Like I said, this stuff hasn't been tested yet. Uh, all the stuff that is sitting on the bench and on this tractor has been tested. Uh, all this stuff on the tractor actually works just fine. This stuff all up here needs some work. Like I said, that one that one wasn't part of the lot. That was out of the genie. I got one of the old Sears receiver boards. There's logic boards, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is off the um, True Guard that didn't come with it. That's just up here by coincidence. That's how you enough to test um, boards out. Same with the uh, Rainer Pilot. I got Smart Dip. Uh, I got a bunch of billion codes. Actually, this one doesn't require sensors, but I got normal billion codes in here. There's a much newer billion code, Security Plus. I have a regular dip switch board in here too. Probably buried. Oh yeah, I got a, a newer Security Plus board. There's, there's the one dip switch board. These ones worked. And the new operators, I have Overhead Door Legacy, a Phantom. Uh, the 2000 and the ATS were just here by coincidence. I just didn't have anywhere else to put them. Same with the Vemco. I have an Eagle 1000, which is not working at the moment. The board is actually broken, and I have to figure out why the chain is so loose on it. Yeah, this thing has seen better days. This has quite a lot of rust on it. Half horsepower. 
not surprisingly, the wiring diagram is actually still good in here. And it looks like this thing does require sensors, or at least it has the option for hookups. Or I guess they're just optional on this because it says that I can just put a jumper there to bypass it. If I'm reading that right. So I gotta do a retrofit to that to make that work again. Or I think Matt said he might have an extra board for me. And down here, eh, over you can see that I got a perma power. Um, let me get this master out of the way. It needs a power cord before I can test it. And it only has one chain dog on it, so that's gonna be interesting to run. That might it might just be one of those units, it goes up for video and then it comes back down. Like I said, it needs a power cord before I can test it. And the white thing is a big, long antenna for a radio control that probably would have been inside it. Or who knows, there might be a radio control inside it. I haven't opened it up yet. Uh, so that's what I got for new operators. I still have a couple of my own, or other operators just sitting around that need videoed. That Alistair. I have an Alistair Superbelt, a... Liftmaster 2500B and I think a couple others. Uh, I added LED strip lights in here. I thought this would be something kind of cool. I just have this rig right now with an extension cord. and just plugs it in and hooks up to my batteries. I'll close the door in a minute. They're kind of more bluish than I would have liked. I thought they were warm white, but... It's not too horrible on the light. It gives it more of a daylight feeling here. I'm going to close the door. Yeah, I went from a nice quiet lift master to this noisy thing. Yeah, it's, it's more like, I don't know if all it shows up on the video, but it's more like a daylight in here. Almost. It actually looks a lot more blue on the camera. It's weird. So I thought that was um, kind of cool. So I, at least when I'm not using this in the winter, I still have a functioning lights out here. Eventually there will just be another relay on the board that I can control with remote. And I'll probably put up a, um, a four-channel linear receiver. Because who, who knows what else I'm going to be putting in here later. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this back up because... And can't leave with the doors closed. And uh, that'll be it. Yeah, this is, seemed like a really long operator, too. Those are, that's angled pretty far back, and I got it on the last adjustment. Despite having my uh, isolators, it's Still makes a fair bit of noise. Oh, and the um, my lure is so wide it didn't fit in my bracket. <laughs> I actually had to hang the power head before I put this end of it up, so it's kind of off center, but it works. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try to put out videos a little bit more frequently than what I have been. It's more out, and well, I got a lot more stuff to video, so thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.